start the record, uh, recording in progress, and I'm going to share my screen. Should probably also turn on the transcription. All right, just for anyone that wants that. All right, so there are there's a number of projects, there's a number of front end user interfaces that I think can be used to influence design. And for the designers, there's a, I suppose, um, do you think, so let me ask you this first, do you think designers would, it, it would, I think it would be helpful for designers to see the different things that exist today and to hear about some of the things that are likely to exist tomorrow, if that makes sense. What do you think? In what context, really like in Augur's design or like general? Yeah, well, in Augur's design here, let me, let me just uh, show you. Um, So this is the this is one design for Augur that was fairly well thought out in terms of what people want to see it at, mm. at at one stage, and what you see is um, first you have currently stored repo groups. So this is for uh, the United States. Um, is this too big for your screen, or does this work? I can make it no, smaller. Okay. okay. No, it's okay. All right. So an org is like just a grouping like this. These happen to all be GitHub organizations. This is for the Medicaid and Medicare um, organizations in the US government. And when you click on a group, you see all of the different repositories, um, their commit counts, their issue counts, the group that they're in. And if I were to click one like this looks like it might be a good one. I'm going to see uh, license coverage, which is often very small. The lines of code by the top 10 authors, which I need to make these um, GitHub user IDs instead of emails. Um, so that's like a known uh, thing that needs to be fixed. And so you can see who the top 10 contributors are. You can see the lines of code added by them in each year. And if you click a year, you see by month what they did. Uh, if organizational affiliations are entered in the database, which there are not for this one, you would see those broken out. And if you scroll down, you see the pull requests uh, by week, how many are uh, open, um, how many pull requests are accepted per week, um, the pull request declined per week, uh, then some issue data and some code changes commits by week as well as lines of code added by week. That's the primary screen that one sees when they open this interface. They can also select any repository group or group of repositories to compare with each other. So for example, I could compare uh, this one, which is Culper. They're presented alphabetically. Which I probably could type in and start getting them, but I'll scroll endlessly to get to CU. Apparently a lot of C's in this one. So I would select Culper. And then I could go over to maybe the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And I happen to know there's one, I think it's there. Uh, it's their website. And maybe these three. And then I can apply. Well. Leave it to me, leave it to the demo for this not to work. <laughs> um, let me reset and try again. Uh, 
And in fact, that does work. Um, perhaps there's an issue. Yeah, and then when I type that, it doesn't doesn't let me pick others. That's nice. <laughs> All right, let's just pick a bunch of random ones then, so you can get an idea of what happens. So here you'll see a slightly different view where you say the see the code lane changes lines uh, per commit for each of the ones that I selected and ones with very little activity barely show up if they show up at all. Um, this red one, which is the 10x falls eval code changes. Um, this one doesn't begin until May 2020. Um, here you have the Culper project, a pretty heavy spike. Open issues per week. Here you have MLAS. So this could stand to be improved. So perhaps uh, a Z score or a, a, a graph that doesn't use absolute values in some way so that you can see everything. Um, and so you can compare projects in this way as well. So this is one part that exists today. And then there's also what are called risk metrics, which show you um, which licenses are declared. Some licenses pose risks. Um, the forks, um, the license coverage, and uh, whether or not the licenses are approved by OSI. We have one approved license and two not approved license. Sees, and then I think there's a separate process that I haven't run yet that <clears throat> gives them a um, uh, an SPDX download, like a, basically a software bill of materials. So that's Augur interface one and the things that people see. And, and we know from some work that we did before that, that these are useful things. Of course, they're not the only useful things, right? And to illustrate that, I'll show you a, a second interface. Um, where, okay, here you see some, some things that are, that are very similar. Um, commits and stuff, this might not be entirely counted, but if from this straight up beginning screen, we select Augur, you get a series of graphs that graphs that focus on contributor reports. So these contributor reports show you, for example, all the first time contributors, repeat contributors, drive by contributors, second time, etc. And each graph here shows a variation of these things. Uh, this one is the same as the first one that I showed, but it identifies the kind of contribution. Notably, Augur includes issue comments and the opening and closing of issues as contributions, um, commits, pull request comments, and opening of pull requests. Um, and, this, and then basically the colors show you how much of each type of activity, repeat contributors, second time contributors, etc. show you. Any, any questions so far? Mm, just one. You know how the last interface had those spiky, like waves kind of um, reading on the. Yes. On the, yeah. When you said we could work on it, does it mean like, could it be like the way this one, are, like the way the data on this one is presented in bar charts? Or we should yes. just. So, so design, this is like, wide open i'm i'm kind of this is about showing you what we've done so far and the data that we present but there's no don't look at any of this as a specification just look at it as these are useful pieces of data that have been uh, presented curiously. yeah yeah so the that is from a design perspective I would expect designers would have full license to use these as kind of guidance about what data people are interested in, although there's, of course, more, much more data than this that people are interested in. 
Um, and that's it. Okay. There's a new feature on this interface as well called login, where you can actually register a login. Um, uh, and then, so I fill in some information and I'm able to create a, create an account. And I'll add it to my password manager. Now, when I create an account, now I don't see any of the default repositories. So, or I should say any of the repositories that we've already gathered data on. What this allows a person to do, though, and and could allow will will we intend from a design perspective for people to create their own groups of repositories, where a repository could even be in more than one group. And the way it works technically is you go to a profile page where, of course, you can change your password. But here's where you would add repos. So. In this case, let me just add chaos because it's obviously a good one to add. Okay. And when I add chaos now we're going to put like a waiting bar here because there's actually if you look at this X up here it's actually going and adding all of those repos to a user repo table so that they show up uh, as the list of user repos and we'll enrich this with the names. I think somewhat obviously. Okay, so that's, that's something that both the front end and the design should look out for. Yeah, like uh, creating space for you know that show that it's still moving. That makes sense. Sorry, say that again. Okay, like that's like a feature front end and design should want to add, yeah, like yes. to let users know that the site is actually loading the cell like just looking up to that x bar up. yes so the idea is that this would be a hosted version of auger and it would have a an ever-growing set of repositories and anybody who created account created an account would add either an organization or a specific repository from right now just github and then that the data would be collected and they would see it in their view of of auger so so right now one of the things that auger does is it just gives you all the repositories from all the organizations that have been gathered for your instance and most people have have a curiosity about a small subset of of those repositories if if you enter a repository group that doesn't oh, yeah. are, there, are there categories for us to look sorry are there categories for us to look out for that these users want to group their repos in the ways that when so the idea is that we would have the ability for a user this doesn't exist yet but we'd have the ability we'd show the actual names of the repositories and we'd have uh, an, a, a sort of a profile screen where users could put um, ideally through like a drag and drop, but that's open to the designers, the repositories into the groups that the users want to see them in. So if I want to see 25641, whatever that is, in, in a group with five other repositories, but I also want to see it in a gr another group with 11 other repositories, that would be technically possible and and we think this is a way that people use auger and other systems like it or they would desire to i'm asking are there specific categories these groups fall under let's say for instance uh, ripples that are targeted towards health maybe ripples are targeted towards um, hardware are there like people that are targeted towards open science, that kind of thing? Like, are there categories of repos falling out? They're just like self created. Yes. So, any repo that you post, I think you're asking 
um, any repo that you pose to put in would be add. You could add it. Is that what you're asking? No, you are saying that these repos can be grouped. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm asking: it, Are there particular categories these groups should fall under, or as a user, I can just create as much as I want? As a user, you can create as many different groups as you want. Okay. That doesn't exist yet, but that is on the roadmap in the next month. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? Could you, could you, could you repeat the last sentence? The, the ability to put your user repos into your own groups doesn't exist yet. It will exist within the next month. Oh, okay. okay. Techni technically, but the, <laughs> you know, when the, the designers do their work, they could assume the feature exists. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to think of a GitHub. I'm trying to think of a GitHub organization I have not added here yet. Um, I don't think I've added VMware, so I'll add VMware. So the Augur repos, are, or I'm sorry, the Chaos repos already exist in the database. The VMware repos do not. We need some kind of, again, spinner here to show you that this little X is still executing. Essentially, the API is going out to GitHub and gathering a list of all of those repositories. Um, and we're just letting that, that just takes, takes a minute because there's like, I think about 200 repositories, um, in the VMware organization. And so it's adding them into the data. Well, there you go. Bad gateway. <clears throat> Let's see if they ended up getting added. It does look like they got added. So 149. And there's there's something wrong with the um the something wrong. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So these repos are they manually added or like there's the whole API call where or oh, just collects every single existing repo from the top. Uh, there is an API call. So when I put in a GitHub organization, uh, the intention of the API call is that it will um, go out and get all of the repos that are in that GitHub organization. Okay. So now one of the one of the defects we see, you know, that we haven't finished yet is until we actually run collection the name of the repo is null i think that we can fix that using um a substring of the get url um like we do in the other interface so like here you can see instead of a repo name we just provide the full repo url um, and then if we did that over here, you would at least see the names of the repos that are already in your in your list. And uh, before we enable, before we finish the creation of one's own groups, everything goes into this default repo group, which again that would be fixed um, in the long run. And so then that's that's. Uh, an important new feature in this particular Augur interface. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, yes it does. So yeah, once again, don't look at these interfaces as design constraints, more as these are the pieces of information and flows that we have learned are useful over time. Um, but you can see already there are two different interfaces that prevent present two different sets of information and putting them together in a single user interface uh, would be, of course, more optimal. And 
there's one final interface that's actually a separate project uh, called San Diego dash RH. Um, and that project, are you still there? I saw you flash to different machines. Yeah, I switched to. Okay, yep, yeah, okay, cool, totally. Um, so this is a project that Red Hat and others are putting together. Obviously, this is a, not that it matters from a design perspective, this is a dash plotly framework, but it does have um, both that, all the interfaces have the ability to use HTML and stuff. Um, in terms of uh, set aside the technology for the design work, I think what's important is the design work right now. Um, if you click on overview here, um, you have some nice graphical interfaces that can actually be scrolled. So I can narrow the time that I'm looking at. I can shift the window to look at different time frames. Um, I can widen the window to look at longer time frames, and that that characteristic exists in these two, um, as uh, these two here, because the data is um, so dense that it's it's necessary. Here for contributor growth by engagement. So how active are they? Are they drifting away, or are they away? This is essentially looking at a cumulative contributor community over time and giving you a sense of the number whom are active compared to the number who are getting less active and the number who have simply faded away. Um, these activity staleness metrics, um, I could apply. Uh, I don't know if that part works yet. But if I hit enter here, I don't know. I guess 120. Okay, 120 is the max that this puts into place. And so I can I can do some changing so that things aren't stale for 60 days and or they're not staling, which is red for 60 days um, and not stale for 120 days. And you can just see number of issues. Um, same same feature for the number of pull requests exists here. Um, I think I think these kinds of graphs are better. Um, how they're presented, uh, obviously there is no design um, to speak of here right now. Um, I, I certainly like these graphs better than the graphs on the other uh, two Augur interfaces because they are manipulable. They're, they're active, they're live. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then finally, there's just a few more graphs here, which repeat some of the functionalities on the second interface that I showed you, uh, drive-bys per quarter, and the kinds of things that they're doing, first-time contributors per quarter, kinds of things that they are doing. And then uh, over time, they classify contributors as either repeat or drive-by over the life of the project. And you can see how that changes over a window, or you could actually make it a giant window of everything that just kind of lets you see the growth over the entire life of, of the project. And there's some parameters here, like how many contributions are required to be considered a repeat contributor. That's, that's it in terms of what, what exists today. Um, I think I think what we're looking for, or from a design perspective, is how to. You know, one of the limitations here is that there are there are eleven thousand repositories in this uh, particular 
So I can start typing. Um, operate first and I can do the operate first organization and do a search. Um, this is a, a suboptimal, in my opinion, way of indicating that they are loading data. So the graphs will eventually show up. Uh, however, you get those, those are just really weird graphs for showing data in my opinion. Um, but for now, uh, essentially, you're seeing the same data, but for a completely different and much younger project. So obviously, the scaling of the bars is is different here. And if I go up to overview, I see the same kind of bizarre and confusing um, loading functions. Which again, these are these are pretty new. Um, Is that like uh, active? If I try out like that, it's weird. So, eight no dots. Or sorry, is it going to work on my? Yeah, it should work. <laughs> um, I can send you yes, these yes, links. Yes, I'll you. send them to you in Slack, though, <laughs> so that um, you know my experience is. I'm sure your experience is that uh, if I sh if you share a link in a Zoom call. It isn't forever, and it gets harder to find. Okay. Um, and so, here are here are the three interfaces that I showed you. I just shared them with you. I guess, I guess in our in the Augur Labs channel instead of the Chaos channel, somewhat by accident. So, that's that's kind of that's that's what we have, and and you I can. Go ahead. Hey, on Discord. Sorry, did you share it now on Discord? I shared it in the Augur Slack. I can okay. share it also in the nice. Chaos Slack, so you don't have to go to like eleven places like I do. Um, I I just happen to have been in the Augur Slack, Slack, and you happen to exist there. Now I'm sharing them in the Chaos Slack as well, so that you don't need to. Um, Thank you go go forth and uh you know do those things also those other stuff i have to be running before i can use if i can load this site so say that again does does other stuff i have to be running before i can use this site no, but anybody can, so to collect, anybody can use these sites um, that I shared with you. Is that your question? So you can share the links with anyone. Anyone can go look at them. They can create an account on the one where you can create an account. Um, uh, and I don't know what would what I mean would would I, when it comes to talking with designers, what would be the in terms of the way the designers that you're working with work? Uh, obviously, these examples have have some utility, but what what are the best ways to or is there a process that they've employed so far, or are they just sort of ironing that out? Um, Mm, I haven't actually worked with them. I think Uncle is going to be the first time that we we'll have to work together. So I'm not sure of the process they're even I could ask. Mm -hmm. But they mostly just want to understand what Uncle does and like how the software works for them to be able to come up with potential design and the police to help out with like good design and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um if they wanna know the so Augur produces a lot of other data, and um, I don't have a good I don't have a good single place where a summary of that data is provided. Um, but probably the best place to maybe look and get a sense of all of the data that's available is the Augur 
documentation and under schema um, you can see a list of the regularly used tables in Ocker. This is probably um, the place to start where I, I simply list things like commits, contributor affiliations, contributor repos, contributor aliases. Discourse Insights is a machine learning worker. And I, that's, a, that's a case where I think I'd have to sketch out or explain to them how a visualization for that would work. Um, same with labels. Um, there's also a um, machine learning worker that looks at messages, uh, one that does clustering of repos in a repository. Uh, there's obviously a series of analyses of pull requests. So all of that, um, uh, we could maybe do some collaborative sketching around and I could produce if it's helpful sample data sets if they want to play with actual tooling of some kind that's that would be kind of up to their process so i've, I've shown you what's visible in the auger front end today it is um, probably about 10 percent of what's available from the auger back end so Mm, is this something that you need to design and so, so work on? Like, is this something you think they, they can contribute to somehow make you better? Something that can be contribute to to what? So you said that you showed me like the front end part, yeah? Yeah, yes. and that, like, that's like 10%. Oh, yes. Okay. So I'm asking, do you mean 90%? <laughs> Is this something you think that they can also contribute to help out with other like strictly back end? Yes, they could contribute to the so so for the things that we've already visualized in those three different front ends, I think they, they could contribute a design that um uh you know, addresses those things. For the other 90% of data, I think the process would probably look different where I would need to put together, for example, looking at this discourse insights um, and the, the messages analysis or the clustering analysis, I would need to give them ideas of what can be visualized um, and perhaps its utility and where it might go um or they could say where it might go but i i could sketch out a series of additional um visualizations if that's if that's helpful i'm hoping that what i've shown today gives them enough of a general idea that they could start knowing that once it, knowing that the, there's a tremendous amount of, of additional uh, data available. So there could be significantly more, like that 90% could also be displayed, um, perhaps on a, a page like this where by category, uh, you know, and again, I'm not, they can design however they want. I think, um, you know, yeah, they could design however, however they want to. Okay. So I think what we'll do is I'll go right to use um, Kinsley. Um, I think on Monday. Yeah. And then I'll let you know what we come up with. And if you, yeah, I think we should even have you on the meeting. So even like, or I will definitely brief you on what happens on Monday. Then you let us maybe something that we should continue with. So if you have edits to make, then we definitely let you know. Is that is that okay? Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. I'm just uh, looking at when you're. Does do you, would it be helpful if I showed up at this? 
I don't see the design meeting on my calendar. Is it on the chaos calendar? I don't think they have one scheduled for next week yet. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so the God that cares of TV link is telling me not down. Do I need to have it? It's server hosted first, right now. Let me show you this link. Okay. Mm. I, th I think you should you should be able to just click on it. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, there's there's some issues. All right, with that. So it looks like you need to start from uh, gov.chaosTV. Um, it's not it's not extending the URL links that are shared. I have to figure out on this particular server what I don't have configured. How do I run it? Let me see. Right there. So if you if you wanted to see what I showed you, you would have to um, let me share again. You would uh, click through, uh, and then you know select some kind you know select a repo to see that that page. And again, I I don't know why my links are not flowing through right now. Um, I suspect it's something related to my Nginx configuration. Um, and I have to I have to deal with that. So I think it's working now. Mm. Yeah. The the yeah. link that I the original link I sent you is working now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think if I think I don't know for me I still have to navigate to it, but it might be because the server is sitting over here, <laughs> <laughs> and it's inside my home network. So sometimes I don't get all of the help. Some, sometimes it looks different in my house than it does in the world, which is a byproduct of how I'm quote unquote hosting it all right now. Uh, I, I do have gigabit fiber and a series of backups, you know, power backups in place. So it, uh, it's not as though uh, any of it is going away. Um, the, only, the only outage I've had is when a tree fell on the internet line. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> mm, so let, just to take you take us back. I think the most thing that the designers will be working on and trying to make it better would be the way data is displayed mostly. Yeah, because like kept on being retreated, like the way the graphs are represented and like the information is loaded. The other looking at like me, the way data is displayed, maybe a better way to display the graphs and then to be able to let users know when information is still loading before it's used. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and I, I think, you know, anything that they are able to do to make it um, more beautiful, to recommend information architecture, to recommend um, maybe what the left nabs are as we get into conversation, you know how any contribution, you can see that none of these designs are anything that's going to blow you away. You're not, you're not gonna look at any of these pages and think, wow, this is awesome. This is exactly pretty and beautiful and what I want. So I think, I think the core design work of you know, helping us think about consistently laying out all this information is uh, incredibly useful. Okay. And and if uh, you want me to participate in a design meeting um, when you share this, um, or if you want to share this video once it's posted, um, 
you know, just feel free to invite me. Um, meeting, if you put it, if it goes on the chaos calendar, I'll see it. Um, if it goes somewhere else, then, then maybe just message me. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you're very good at the YouTube part. So to definitely give you by a word. Yeah. I don't think that has to be understood. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you so much for your time. How is I do not know where you are now. I feel like you're struggling with that telegraph. Yeah. So how is wherever you are? Yeah, I, I'm in Missouri. The current temperature is uh, 42 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably like 15 degrees Celsius. So it's That's a little, cold. yeah, it's a little chilly. Um, now, actually, it's probably more like 10 degrees Celsius because it's only 10 degrees above freezing. So, um, you know, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius right now. So it's a little chilly this morning. Um, I think it's going to warm up to um a whopping 61 degrees or 19 18 19 degrees celsius um so how are things where you are it's okay i can't tell what the weather is right now but it's hot it's hot outside it's hot <laughs> yeah yeah well and, it's okay. yeah enjoy, enjoy the heat and um i look forward to talking with you soon yeah me too thank you thanks, thanks precious bye